This video is going to cover how to use Asset Center's custom device configuration to compare recipe file changes in the new Recipe Pro Plus functionality of Factory Talk VUSC. It is also going to show how to leverage a third party compare utility tool called Beyond Compare to execute the CSV compare. To get started, we have to create a custom device. Go to Custom Devices and click Add New Custom Device. We'll call it CSV. A. First, we'll be filling in our command section and we'll be using the Factory Talk File Viewer executable. This will allow us to export the Recipe Pro Plus files into CSV files. Once in CSV format, these files can be compared. Its default location is in Program Files, Rockwell Software, RSView Enterprise, and located inside this folder. We have three arguments in the left combo box that we have to move over to the right combo box. First, I'm going to be adding the ARD argument, which allows for individual asset customization. Then I will add the space and then the ARG argument. This is a global property inherited by any custom device asset. In the argument section, this is where I will be adding my first global argument. Click the percent sign and add the backup folder path. This argument is a global argument that is shared by all custom devices and their schedules. It calls the full path to the backup folder. I'm going to add a backslash and then the name of what I want my Recipe Pro Plus file to be named once it's created into a CSV. Finally, in the backup location, I'm going to just select the destination folder for the file conversion. Since our file viewer utility will create a CSV file, from the native Recipe Pro Plus files, it needs to be a path where the CSV file will be stored following the conversion. I have pre-created a folder in the C drive called CSV. Moving on to the Compare Configuration section, this is where we will be leveraging our third-party Compare Utility tool called Beyond Compare. First, I'm going to be adding the Beyond Compare Utility tool executable. Its default location, when I downloaded it, was in the Program Files, Beyond Compare, than the Beyond Compare executable. I will be adding only the global argument as I want all my arguments to apply to all of my assets. First, I will be adding as a global property the path to my script. The appropriate syntax is quotations at symbol, then the path to your script file. Next, I will be adding the archive file path mnemonic backslash the name of the CSV file that's being generated up in the argument section of the backup configuration. Then I will be adding the backup file path, mnemonic, again naming it testrecipe.csv. And finally, I will be adding my report file path. Now I'm going to show what my particular script looks like. If we look at the script, against what we have in the global arguments section, I am comparing my archive file path, which I'm passing as my variable one, my backup file path, which I'm passing as my variable two, and my report file path, which I'm passing as my variable three. What this particular script does is it compares two files and generates an HTML report. For more information on writing script files with Beyond Compare, please visit the website that's located on the screen. Returning back to the demo, I'm going to be adding in my report location. This is the path where the agent will retrieve the compare report as part of the disaster recovery schedule. I have pre-created my path located in the C drive called report location. Then I'm going to add a backslash and enter the name of what I want my report to be called once it's generated from beyond compare. In my case, We'll call it mygeneratedreport.html. Next, we're going to be adding this custom device to the asset tree. Click Design, Asset Center, select Custom Device, and click Add Custom Device to Asset Center. Name your custom device. We'll call it CSV Compare. In our backup data, note that no input is required because it will be automatically generated upon the first run of the schedule. Use the Browse button associated with the configuration data to select the binder for use with the asset. In this example, there is no real configuration data because we will not have a CSV that we are editing. Instead, we are using the Recipe Pro Plus file as our source, and therefore I'm just going to select in the C drive the CSV folder. 
I'm going to name my binder CSV and press OK. In my next section, I will be filling out the backup. First, in my custom configuration, I'm going to select the custom device that we configured called CSVA. Then I will be adding in my argument section the location of the Recipe Pro Plus file that I want to be converted into a CSV file. The default location for these Recipe Pro Plus files is in the C drive, Users, Public, Public Documents, RSView Enterprise, SE, HMI Projects, and then your HMI project that has the Recipe Pro Plus file that you want to convert. In our case, we'll use recipe01.rcpf. Recipe01.rcpf, then add quotations. The reason that I'm adding quotations is because there's spaces in my file path. If I didn't have any spaces in my file path, quotations would not be required. Click check. Finally, I'm not going to fill out my backup location. This is because I've already set my backup location in my custom configuration. If, for whatever reason, on this particular asset, I wanted to override that backup location, this is where I would do that. The same goes for my arguments. This is the location where I would put my script if I wanted to use a specific script for this particular asset. Otherwise, my script is being treated as a global property located in my custom configuration. Now we're going to run the compare. Go to Schedules and click New. Select Disaster Recovery Backup and Compare and name your schedule. We'll call it CSV Compare. Click Next. In your timing properties, this is where you can set the frequency of your schedule. In our operation properties, we will also be keeping these as defaults. Click Finished and click Run Now. On the very first run of our schedule, no compare will be occurring, and that's because the CSV file doesn't exist on the first run of the schedule. But once it's generated on the first run, the second run will show the compare results. Before we do that, though, I will show you in the archive that we indeed have our CSV file located in our backup binder. Now, to run the schedule a second time, we'll notice that the operation succeeded and no differences were found. We'll be able to view this in the logs. It is here that our Beyond Compare HTML report was generated. We'll be able to view by going here to the attachment and viewing. Here we can see that there are no differences found and thus you see a blank slate. I have pre-generated for the purposes of this demo an example of a Beyond Compare with differences that we can see here. Here we can see that there are some key differences in some of the values. We have 14 in one CSV and we have an 11 and another CSV, for example. This concludes the demo.